welcome to this week's episode of Esports Wrap. I'm your host, Michael Amorgan, and uh, we'd like to just give a quick apology. We've taken a break for about a month, and um, we know some people were asking, like, well, when's the next show kind of thing, and what's the next topic? So, anyway, we're here, and <laughs> uh, we're back. So, to kick things off, last time we had a serious conversation it was hey paladin knight um it was actually i think the episode before our when we uh took a break because i know our last episode was talking about a tournament that was supposed to happen but didn't um and the one before that if i remember correctly was about contracts now i could be wrong with that one but today we're going to be talking about tournament payouts and prizes and things along that line and this is something that's a topic that i've chosen mainly because of two real reasons one something that i saw at a local tournament that happened where i live and two well if you haven't seen it already there's a kid who played fortnite and got three million dollars for winning first place so we're going to be talking about esports, tournaments, and payouts, along with what that essentially means from the beginning to now. And I want to just give a, this is going to be a little bit of a history mes- um, lesson, just a little bit, mainly because, well, we have to go back a few decades to really get to the heart and soul of where esports really started from. And this was back in 1972. Uh, now, a lot of people say that the first major tournament actually happened in, uh, well, that was the Space Invaders World, well, Championships. Now, that one's a little bit here or there. Because there was actually another one that happened before that, which is recognized as the first real uh, esports tournament, though it wasn't as big. And that one was in October, two th- sorry, 1972 at Stanford University, and people competed over a game called Space War. Very close an idea to uh, invaders, uh, space invaders. Now, that one, that was mainly just students. But it was still probably the first tournament that really happened. Move forward a few years. You have Space Invaders, which had 10,000 participants who came together and played. And this was something that kind of made gaming, in a sense, a uh, an understandable hobby for some. Like this was the first step in that real direction. Now. I want to make mention of this because, sure, if we take a look from Space War, and let's actually take a look, Space War Tournament 2000, sorry, tournament for 1972, and take a look at the prize. We see that it uh, was held 40 years ago had a really super old uh connection but you don't really see any prizes for it like there's nothing they don't really say that much about it as time came though to really draw in crowds prizes became the thing and you know that's that's even to today's date that's how (laughs) <laughs> video games don't give you any money we're gonna get to that because for a while they didn't um and this is even like the top tier ones and if they did it was only for first place kind of thing sometimes so if we take let me just make sure before i move on okay so for that first tournament it was a subscription to the rolling stone magazine for the winning prize that was for the 1972 tournament i know i read that already but i somehow forgot that um right so then in 1980 
when the Space Invaders Championship came out, which had 10,000 people, you know, they had to up the ante a little bit. And for that one, the prize is actually ranged a little bit because uh, so the person who actually won it didn't actually want to win it. They wanted to become second place. But fifth place was a $50 gift certificate. Uh, fourth place was $100 worth of stuff and a video game collection. Uh, sorry, I think third place was a video, a video game collection. They wanted the Atari 800 computer, which was second place. And uh, they did not get that because first place was actually a stand up arcade game, like one of the old school arcade games where you'd have like the joystick and buttons and you pressing around and stuff like that. That was the first place prize. So, again, there's no real monetary prize. There's physical prizes, there's gift certificates. That's about as far as they went with that. Now, things developed further from there. Uh, if we take a look at Nintendo World Championships, which started f around that 1990 time, uh, I think their first prize was actually the finalists won a trophy, $125 in cash, and a trip to for two to the World Finals at Universal Studios Hollywood in Los Angeles, California. The runners-up won a Nintendo Power Pad and a Game Boy. Now... $250 might not sound like much for such a well-known brand having their own tournament. But in today's uh, day and age, I did a little bit of conversion and turns out that the $250 is now ranging anywhere from between $434 to $863 I mean, sorry, $863 for 2018. Um, I got that from measuringworth.com. You can take a look at there. Do your own checks and you know you can verify what i say uh that being said you didn't really see monetary prizes come about until about the 2000s or even late 1990s kind of situation uh again remember that $250 that was 1990 that wasn't commonplace that came in more so around 1995 96 97 and you'd find more of the tournaments that were happening from around that time starting to offer cash prizes although they kept them low around that same between 100 250 kind of range for cash uh, and those were the bigger ones uh be I'm guessing because it was probably easier to give them physical stuff than, you know, the whole idea of giving people cash to then go didn't quite fit with a lot of sponsors or people who were actually in the process of making these things. Um, by the way, keynote information that 1980 tournament for space invaders was actually won by a 14 year old, uh, boy who is no longer a boy and we actually do have a picture of what that tournament looks like from 1980 it's not the best with segregation well not segregation diversity i should say quite different belief systems um and you will see that there's some females there but they're spectating all the way in the back here like you'll see like one maybe two girls with like froze uh which was commonplace back then for both uh well for blacks and whites but all the competitors they look pretty uh pretty standard <laughs> hey there power boy welcome to the stream how you doing today yeah pretty much paladin it's just how they were the thing that throws me back are those monitors though or rather those tvs like holy crap do you remember those things like those were the, those were around for a long long time yes power boy i'm doing quite well we're talking about 
payouts and esports and how things have progressed from the 1970s to today's day and age when it comes to prizes and so on and so forth. Now, while things have developed quite a bit more from there, uh, reporting on these prizes, monetary prizes, hasn't really been that great. And it's actually kind of hard. Places that even report this kind of stuff quite literally state, you know, finding this kind of information is very hard because it's not always factually correct. They need confirmation that these people were actually paid out these amounts. And then you need to know exactly who these people are. Like they gave an example that there's like eight different people who have the tag hero, but are from completely different countries. And so if you just say hero won a hundred thousand dollars, they don't know who to give it to or to list it down to say who won. And one of the best places that I actually like to get um, my information from is actually esports league. Um, sorry esportsearnings.com which has a lot of very very good information when it comes to this kind of stuff like the top 100 highest overall earnings is a guy who's um, who plays Dota 2 and he's from Germany his name is Kuro Takaha Somi, um, but isn't he goes by Kurokai? And he's been in over he's been in ninety nine tournaments, has won a grand total from all of those of about four thousand two hundred and thirty five four hundred and six uh, fifty three dollars and fifty five cents. But his information only really goes back as far as two thousand and eight, and that's how far back a lot of people's own go and for that one he only won 123 dollars and 34 cents that progressively became more and more uh the next tournament he did 600 dollars uh if you combine the next four that he did which was in 2012 that came up to a total of about 1129 oh you're in portugal cool well i'm right now i'm in the bahamas but um that that's cool man how's it over there 2013 he went into 18 tournaments came up with a hundred and fifty six thousand dollars five hundred and eighty one sorry five hundred fifty six thousand five hundred eighty one dollars 2014 just a little bit more than that 2015 over three hundred thousand uh 2016 just a little bit more than that 2017 is where he made the most out of 14 tournaments, gaining over $2 million. And then from there, he went back into the hundreds of thousands with 600, almost 650,000, almost, and then 106,500 for this year, which the year's not over. He seems to have a basis of between like a few, the teenage, pretty much double digits uh, amount of tournaments. This year, he's only had six. And so it's information like this, which is very beneficial um, because then we could also take a look to see who's the top ranked, well, the top earner for female gamers or console players, fighting game players, oldest players, uh, mobile game players, you know, online, offline, LAN earnings, under 18, um, so on and so forth. Like this information becomes quite useful because today's day and age, they're not so much looking for consoles they're not so much looking for uh this that or the next as physical prizes they're looking for the cash they're looking for the recognition and that's a different standard than what we used to experience back in the time of arcades and the old old school console systems and with that time people have changed because back then a lot of the people who used to play arcade games used to try and mod themselves. Uh, so they tried to learn how to program and play the game and so on and so forth, or at least get somewhere into that field. Nowadays, everyone can be, can essentially get into the field. They don't necessarily need to be someone that's interested 
in programming or video game design or esports or however you want to call it. They are just there either for fun and to see where they place or they're trying to make this something that is serious and making a living from it. And that's where we really start to get where today's esports comes about. Where people are throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars to create these tournaments. As of now, millions of dollars into these tournaments. Uh, quite literally, Fortnite probably has had the biggest prize pool as of yet. With uh, their duos having $15,100,000 for their prize pool, for their duos. And for their solos, it was $15,287,500 for their solo prize pool. That was split between uh, 128 people. Uh, from the 128 to, let's see, the 21st place, all of them got $50,000 for placing, for placing in the top 128. That is insane. That's more than what some people make in a year. But that's what the whole thing is about, making sure that people can actually make a living from this kind of thing. I see Paladin Knights throw, um, putting some stuff in the chat. He says that, which is also why Nintendo's not supporting this scene makes them the worst for esports items at the E3 tourney for Smash. And IIRC qualifiers also got paid money. Right, so that's that's what I'm talking about. Um, Nintendo's always been a little weird with their esports scene, um, even from the time of Tetris and stuff like that. But that's Nintendo. Like, I'm not sure when they really take their esports scene serious. Uh, I know they portrayed it with the Switch very, very early on, but that never seemed to really came to fruition until like more recently when they were starting to do the Splatoon stuff. Uh, but even that's not on the level of where they had it portrayed. And then Smash, it's more their vision, more casual. They're not really going for that hardcore esports gamer. Uh, they're going for the casual esports gamer. Which you think that there's not a, a difference, but there actually is. There's just the people that will go to a LAN event or a local uh, area event and just play against people that they know versus those that will actually travel for it and actually like go and train and stuff like that. That's the difference between a casual esports gamer and a hardcore esports gamer. Um, Paladin says Nintendo knows that they aren't supporting the scene apparently and wanted to grow on its own. Rip Arms never had a chance. I feel for Arms. I really do. Like that was a really good game. I enjoyed that one. And I don't know. Like that could have had so much more potential. But going back to Fortnite, from the 20th place to the 16th place had a, a prize pool of 100 and $12,500, then it jumped to $150,000 for 15th to 11th, then $225,000 for 10th, $300,000 for 9th, $375,000 for 8th, $525,000 for 7th, $600,000 for 6th, $900,000 for 5th, a million five hundred thousand for 2nd, sorry, for 4th pl place, folks. 1,200,000 for third, 1,800,000 for second, and $3,000 to a 16 year old kid named Booga, who lives in the United States, whose mother threw away his Xbox because she thought it was a waste of time. He's now $3 million richer. And he's not doing fool with his money either, apparently. He's actually planning on investing it and spending it wisely. The only thing that he's planning on splurging on is a new gaming desk. I can't fault the kid. 
He did well. He came in sec he came in first place. And uh He's not about to blow it. Now second place, that guy plans on spending it on gambling and uh whatever he feels like he because and it's a lot of people are saying it's probably because he only feels like he's won a few hundred thousand dollars tops not one million eight hundred thousand dollars so but keeping in mind that the duos while they have the first place is three million as well that has to get split so that's 100 sorry that's 1,500,000 per team member then 2,250,000 for this um, second so on and so forth down the line so to put it in summary you have different types of payouts you have the physical type where you get an item or a gift card or something that's not monetary as one option you then have another option which is right before that which is just prize pools uh, this is where you know you pay to enter into a game and then that gets split between the different participants some tournaments well some games actually make this mandatory for anyone that's licensed by them for example hearthstone if you run a licensed hearthstone tournament uh, for the most part, you have any money that the players paid to enter into that tournament must be paid back out to the players. So things like sponsorships can be divvied up however it is, but anything that's paid into it from the players must be paid back out. And so that's one form of it. The next form is if you take that same format with prize pools and you add on, which is kind of what I was talking about with the sponsors. So let's say you have a local tournament that has a $10 entry fee and that gets split between the participants. Um, if there's seven people, I'm going to go with something that I already know about. Then that's like less than 20 bucks that the person would win if they won first place. The next step is to add more money on top of that, which requires sponsorship. That's either coming from the tournament organizer <clears throat> or some outside, outside source. Uh, we can actually use the League of Legends tournament that happened here in the Bahamas as an example where it was a free entry. The very first tournament was free and we had a sponsor for that for over for a hundred dollars and then another sponsor uh, took it up to one hundred and twenty five dollars to make sure that everyone was able to get a clean split with the codes uh, for Riot Points. So that is a sponsored non-monetary value uh price because you're not actually getting cash but you're getting something that's that you would have paid for with cash which is the riot points now then you move over to things that are more sponsorship only and that's where you come into the things like fortnite league of legends uh, like the official tournaments for these kind of things where you know they actually these tournament organizers lobby and they they go out for sponsors and this that and the next and advertisers and like spend a lot of time and effort trying to get this money so that they can then give out to people and make this tournament big and that's where things start to get a little hazy because then they can range anywhere from a thousand dollars actually they can range from just a few hundred dollars uh, all the way up to, as we can see now, a few million. And honestly, overall, like I would say that you really have to be careful when it comes to how you do these kind of things. Because all of them have good points and bad points. Uh, we can use the example of the first large scale esports winner not actually wanting first pro uh, first place and ending up with something that they actually didn't want, which is one of the reasons why people start to go for money because with money you can buy what you want versus different prizes 
which may not be what the person who wins wants. Sure, you can end up like trying to swap it, but there's no guarantee the person who actually has the prize you want will swap it for what you have. Um, but yeah, folks, that's essentially the history of uh, esports payments in a little bit of a nutshell right there like there's more information that you probably could find but it's hidden away and well i shouldn't say hidden away but most of it's already been covered by what i've said um because from the 1990s to probably the 2010s area which is our current decade then not much really changed in between there it was kind of stagnant different stuff happened here and there uh there were some world's tournaments but again there weren't really those big big prizes like we see nowadays and let's not forget the money was different back then so the amounts would be registered differently as well a hundred dollars back then is easily quite more than that nowadays if you were going were to convert it for value so Let's see, Paladin's saying that they added controller mapping, etc. for ARM, so you didn't have to use motion controllers that would have brought in so much people. And also, Fortnite just has a lot of money to spend on esports, and they got even more because people want to pay competitively. That's true, not only to mention that Fortnite is now owned by Epic Games. Well, it was always owned by Epic Games. Epic Games owns Unreal Engine, and people license... Well, they make money from Unreal Engine because people license out through them so they make money like fortnite themselves well epic games themselves says that one of their competitors PUBG, uses their engine so they make money from PUBG, and they're supposedly like they talk to them almost every day so <laughs> it's that them make them rolling in cash that's the reason why they could do something like a game store uh, and then he says, to be honest, that's still some good money. Could easily start streaming Fortnite and invest that money for streaming and get more money potentially from orgs, etc. That's correct. That's not even talking into facts. Like when you actually start to place in these tournaments, you get money. You can start to upgrade your stuff and maybe start doing some marketing and whatnot and get yourself known to get sponsored, making it make quite a decent living from it. Now, this kid uh <laughs> who uh has three million dollars like he doesn't a lot of people are saying he doesn't necessarily need to work anymore in his lifetime and you know if you take sixty thousand dollars and times it by let's say 80 years you're gonna get four million eight hundred dollars so if this kid manages okay we can even subtract that because let's say a lot of people don't actually live to uh 80 but he's now 16 so that makes it so 64 so let's say sixty thousand dollars if you're living really good right you're really good and um times it by 64. that means you only need three million eight hundred and forty thousand dollars to live your life making like if you were living that kind of uh, making that kind of money technically he maybe has to work three years of his life at a not so great paying job to uh to cover most of his expenses that he probably would have for his entire life hey white pancakes welcome to the stream we're about finished though like i know you got school and stuff and so like you're always kind of late but thank you for still showing up um plus i know you know today we're just back for the first time in like a month so <laughs> oh well i mean if you got work you got work can't really do anything about that Paladin Knight says, even then, if he keeps placing well in tourneys, he can get 
some nice money that's true as well and you know even with um let's say the cost of having to travel to tournaments if you're making sixty thousand dollars a year and this is of course me still being on that like you live in a pretty good life you're not living the best but you're certainly not suffering um then he could take from that and invest it into these trips to then possibly make more money so he still doesn't really have to touch it too heavily and then if he places then great i mean if you're placing as well as you did against so many different people um you're probably going to be doing good going forward at least for a decent few years so long as you can decide to continue doing this um i know some people were saying like they were surprised by some of the names that he beat and to be quite honest like i'm looking at the list and i am not seeing that many popular names folks like it's uh Quite honestly, there's not any name that I I could say that really jumps out at me. He could even start his esports organization, his own esport organization. That's true. Um, that's a bit of a risk. Um, that's a lot of investment, but he could. He definitely could. What I do love about this, though, is that this was actually a world championship. So you quite literally have people coming from a bunch of different countries like China, uh, from New Zealand, from Brazil, from uh, the United Kingdom, from Canada, from um, Korea, so on and so forth, just coming to play this game. And, you know, I, I wish we had someone from the Bahamas who could have gone. Like, I, I actually do. But dreams, wishes, and hopes for the future. That's that's all I could really say about that one. Um, let's see. Paladin I says, those names are going to be popular the moment they announce they are going to start streaming or people find their streams. That's true. But see, therein lies now having these records, which we didn't have from back then. We just have little articles here and there that kind of we can find if we look hard enough. And trust me, they're not necessarily all that easy. Uh, that gives us information about the types of stuff that happened back then. Um, hopefully these same sites will have this information 10, 20 years down the road so that people can down then actually see how things were now. For all we know, things could be vastly different. I know... Um, the method of how they pay people out is starting to change there it's between physical cash or you know checks that kind of stuff or bitcoin i shouldn't really use bitcoin uh that's a particular type of stuff but cryptocurrency in the form of contracts so that if you place for first second third fourth fifth then there's a contract that's a crypt that's cryptologically signed um to say okay well this person satisfied this particular quest and so they get this goal and uh, which is you know this reward so they get this amount of money that kind of thing and then that's a ledger system for that kind of stuff and then they can either get paid out and they can then take that information to verify that they um are supposed to get paid out for this amount or they get it in cryptocurrency which they can then use to buy stuff but cryptocurrency hasn't really taken off so I, while I know that there were some tournaments that really tried to push that, I know that there are a number of people that are really, well, a number of groups that have not gone that way. Like the majority of groups still have not gone that way and still prefer paying their uh, players in cash. But that might be something we can be seeing in the future. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but things change. That's the only constant that things will change. Um, it's a bit of an oxymoron, but that's how it is for esports and for pretty much everything else. Paladin says it doesn't feel like crypto will take off for like five to ten years because not a lot of places obviously will accept that. That's true. So we'll have to see. We will have to see. 
um, as more countries start to take on cryptocurrency, that might become something more viable. Um, take a look for something like that in our sister show, More Tech. In the near, hopefully near future, we'll be talking about some government cryptocurrencies with some very important people. But that's for another episode, and that's for a different show. But for this show, Esports Wrap, I'd like to thank everyone who decided to stop in and be a part of the conversation. And um, don't forget, folks, Esports Wrap is every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our sister show, More Tech, is on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to be a part of the More Cookies Discord, the link is below the video. Uh, if you're on YouTube, Twitch, or uh, if you're on watching on Twitter, then, you know, take a look over on the Twitter handle. Um, if you want to become a part of the Bahamas Gamers and Otaku Discord, which is something that we're developing, has close to 500 Bahamians inside of it. Uh, we'll be posting something up with that down below as well. And uh, or just go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot ly slash bgo underscore 242 and until next time folks this is more cookies your host michael armorgan take care